What's up everybody, this is Armas from Speedemy. Welcome to the Advanced MySQL Slow Query Logging Tutorial Part 2. In Part 1 we have done some slow query logging and got a report to work with. If you missed the video you can find the link in the video notes below. And now let's take a look at the PT Query Digest report. I want to go over some key areas so you know what to look for and where. First thing you are presented with is an aggregated view across all of the queries. If it's generated from a community MySQL query log, it will have significantly less information, but some key numbers should still be there. In this global view, it's a good idea to look at the overall line, which shows total number of queries logged, how many of them were unique, numbers of queries per second and concurrency. It gives you a pretty good overall picture if no rate limiting was applied. In the lower section of this view, you may sometimes find some really interesting things, like for example, if you're using MyISAM, and many queries are suffering from table level logs, you may see a total execution time of 2000 seconds and log time of 1950 seconds. This is actually pretty common and indicates that out of 2000 seconds total, only 50 seconds are spent executing queries, whereas the rest, 1950 seconds, are spent waiting on the query logs. Rows sent versus rows examined are also interesting numbers to compare, and so are many others below, but it's much more interesting if you look at them for the individual queries. So we'll cover the other columns when we're talking about individual queries. Profile Profile for me is the most important part of the PT Query Digest report. It's really crucial that you understand what information it provides, because simply by looking at the profile, you can answer a lot of questions that seemed very hard just minutes ago. Like, how much is a certain query contributing to the total server workload? How much processing power you can save by optimizing this specific query? Is this query always slow, or is it just a one-time thing? And the most important thing to understand is that if you log queries with long query time set to zero and no rate limiting, then the profile represents everything that was happening in MySQL at that time. In other words, what you see here is where 95% of MySQL processing time was spent. Technically it's 100%, but the 5% that had the least impact is not listed in the profile. Let's go over each column real quick. Rank. By default, queries are aggregated by fingerprint and then sorted by the total time all queries matching the same fingerprint took to execute. Query ID is a fingerprint checksum. It helps you quickly find detailed statistics for the same query. Response time. Response time is a total time it took all queries matching the same fingerprint to execute. This is basically sorting criteria for this list of queries. It is both expressed in milliseconds and in percents. Calls is the number of times this query was called. Response time per call, how long a single request took to execute on average. Variance to mean ratio of response time, also known as index of dispersion, is a measure that basically shows how stable the query response time is between different runs. Zero means response time is not dispersed, and values between zero and one indicate a level of dispersion. And item is an abbreviated version of the query, basically a query type followed by a list of tables participating in the query. So you see this first query taking 43.1% of processing time, it's funny that the execution time for this query is way smaller than one second, is actually just under 100 milliseconds. Yet this query is taking more than 40% of total processing time. You may have not realized that it's using so many resources, maybe it's not even important for you. Perhaps so much so that you can get rid of it at all. Well, guess what? If you do that, server workload will be reduced by 43.1%. Alternatively, if you make it 100 times faster, which can often be achieved with select queries, then the total impact of this query will reduce to 0.5% and server utilization will, again, decrease by more than 40%. Next up is the query list. This is where you can see all the details about each query. With basic versions of MySQL, such as Community Edition, you will only get execution and lock time plus row sent, examined, and affected. With Percona Server and MariaDB, 
assuming you have turned on the advanced logging, you will also get a lot of information about the optimization plan, InnoDB IO stats, etc. I will show you how to turn on all these stats in part 3 of this tutorial. So, what are we looking for here? 1. Do I really need to run this query? As you probably know, the best way to optimize a query is not to run it at all. And, funny as it sounds, quite often we would find some useless query in the top 5 being executed hundreds of times per second. 2. Do I really need to run it this often? If you see same query being called few times a second, you should consider caching it. It is especially true if the query doesn't vary much, or if variations are skewed and therefore they would benefit from caching either way. 3. If it's an insert or an update, maybe several such operations could be botched into one. Counter updates are frequently a cause of an update overdose. Usually, you don't really care if 5 minutes worth of counter data is lost. So, consider moving real-time updates to memcached or similar lossy store and doing actual update to the database once every 5 minutes or so. 4. What is the query actually doing? Is the execution time normal given the task? Is it supposed to be examining the amount of rows it is examining? For queries that don't do any aggregation, normally you should not have rows returned to rows examined ratio higher than 1 to 100 or more. If you do, check how you can index the data better. Aggregation queries? Different story. 5. Are there any table level locking issues? If so, why is that? Is any of the tables still my ISAM? Am I using explicit table level locks? 6. Is it reading from disk too much? Maybe adding more RAM and increasing the size of the InnoDB buffer pool is all I need. 7. Page is distinct. If it's very high, maybe we can change a primary key structure so this query benefits from data clustering by primary key. 8. Q weight. If it's high, we can fine-tune InnoDB concurrency control or maybe disable it at all. 9. A lot of record lock weights. Let's find what's causing logical locking issues. In fact, having a full query log is the only way to track these down in all MySQL versions up to 5.7. 10. Is the query doing a full table scan or a full join? If so, Let's look for better ways to index the query. 11. Temporary table. Maybe we can avoid it by better indexing too. 12. Query time distribution is really interesting to understand how stable the query is. Sometimes you can see query at two extremes, really fast, under a millisecond, and then some slower response time. It's likely the difference between cached and non-cached response. Otherwise, if response time is dispersed, let's find the instances where the query is much slower than usual in the query log, and with that information, it will be easy to figure out why. Of course, it's only a handful of questions given as an example, but it's a good start. Ultimately, what you're really asking is a single question. Is what I'm seeing really making sense? If not, figure out why. And if it does, then let's see what we can do about it. After all the stats, you have an example of the query itself. What's really useful is that by default, PT Query Digest puts the worst performing example of the query. Remember that queries are grouped by a fingerprint. And here it displays a real query, one that was the slowest in the entire sample. You can copy the query from here and then feed it to the explain for further optimization. I'm not going to cover query optimization now, as it's a very wide topic. I will cover it in future videos though, so do subscribe if you're interested. Now, if we look at this specific query, there's actually one very interesting thing. You may have noticed already that for a single call, the average rows examined is 133,000 rows, whereas row sent is zero in every single case. And now, you may have noticed that this is a select query which means basically that this query never returns any results. And I mean, do we really need to run the query that doesn't return any results? Probably not. 
So it's definitely worth mentioning to the customer. And I mean, it's using over 43% of resources in total. That's really, really huge. So basically just by eliminating this specific query, we will reduce the server utilization almost by 50%. In part three of this short video series, I would like to show you how I got all these extra statistics in this low query log. In other words, in part three, we are going to be talking about slow query logging fine tuning. I hope you liked the video. Thank you very much for watching. And if you want to not miss part three, you can subscribe or maybe the video is already there. So you should see some buttons on this screen. So thank you very much for watching. This was Armas from SpeedME. See you soon.